Hey guys, it's Larry, and today I am going to do a quick tutorial on how I destroy a book, or <laughs> better said, how I am going to unbind this book and uh, punch holes in it and turn it into a uh, disc bound book. So if you're familiar with this book, it is fabulous. This is the 100 Days of Bible Promises. It is a devotional journal. It is very popular um, in all of the Facebook groups that I'm seeing right now and on YouTube. So I know a lot of people are using it and enjoying it. It's by Shannon Noel. Um, I'll put a link below where I bought it. I bought it, gosh, several months ago, and I just made the commitment to actually working in it and I absolutely love it. So if you want to see how people are unbinding these and turning them into disc bound or spiral bound, I'm gonna show you and I'll show you some of the little things that I've done in here. All right, so stick around if you wanna see how I'm doing it. Okay, so here again is my book, and this is, like I said, something that's really popular with a lot of the groups that I'm in on Facebook, and I've even seen some people doing their journaling online as kind of a daily thing, where they show how they're journaling in it and using mixed media to decorate. Now, I am a paper crafter and a journaler and a planner. And I love stamps. I'm also an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. So I pulled out some of my Stampin' Up! stamps and I decided to start using them in here. And, you know, I'm very lightweight. I'm not using a lot of mixed media. I'm just using colored pens, colored stamps, and stuff like that. So um, I just felt, especially with the stamping, that it would be so much easier to have a flat surface and be able to remove the pages as I'm working in them, kind of like you do with a happy planner, um, where you can pull out the pages, work on them, do your decorating and journaling, and then slip them back into the discs. So that's what I'm going to do with this book today. And I actually confess, I started this last night and decided, you know, I should probably record this for you because there's a lot of people that are trying to do this too. So I started with the back cover, and what I did is I took my little crafty knife here, just an X-Acto knife, and I literally just cut this back page, that's all I've done so far, but I started cutting right at that seam just to remove the cover from the rest of the book. And I sliced right down here and it's real sticky. There's a there's some glue in there. And then as I was pull as I was cutting, I started pulling it apart. And so this part's already done, but I'm just going to show you the glue kind of stuck it back together. And I just cut it. I'm going to cut right now. I'm just cutting the glue. But this is how I cut that seam. Like that. And see how it just pulled right away. Perfectly pulled away. And then there's the rest of the binding. See that? super easy. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing on the front. And now that I've got the camera rolling, watch me cut my finger off. Ugh. All right, anybody who watches my videos, you know I am far from graceful. So let's see what we can do here. Let me, I'll actually zoom you in too. Hold on and I'll zoom you in a little bit. See if you can get a good view of this. If there is bloodshed, I will not. <laughs> I'll, blo I'll uh, block it out. So this, I'm just looking at this seam right here, and there's a little bit of a crinkle. Can you see that right there? So I'm going to start right at that spot. you can see what I'm doing. I don't think my lighting is so great. Okay, got it started. Now let's push it down. And just very slowly and carefully I'm cutting that seam. Ah, oh, there it goes. See how it's kind of pulling?
and I pull the pages apart while I'm doing it. And I can feel I'm getting into that glue and that's fine. It'll pull away and I can cut it. But I'm just cutting right along that seam. I could probably do this a heck of a lot faster, but I don't know, maybe I'm afraid of cat. I don't want to ruin my book, right? That would totally defeat the purpose. Okay, am I still in camera view? I think I'm shaking the table too, sorry guys. But see how easy that is? And just keep pulling. Keep your fingers out of the way. And there it is. Now I'm just really cutting glue, which is going to probably muck up my knife a little bit, but that's fine. I can clean that. Just cutting through all the stickiness. Look at that. Isn't that cool? Ta-da! Oh my gosh! Totally cool! There it is! So now, I have a giant, like, gargantuan paper cutter. I'm going to take my cover, cut out this spine, which I love, but I'm going to get rid of that. And then I am going to take my paper cutter, because it can cut through this thickness, and I'm going to literally cut the spine off and the material binding, and I'm going to get it, obviously, as close to that bind as possible so I don't lose any of my content. Now let's see, one thing I wonder about is my little bookmark. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to lose my bookmark, it looks like, in the process, because see how that's connected to the binding? So I will lose my bookmark, but I'll find a way to reattach it or something. And this just, actually this just pulls right off too, but I'm just, I'm just going to cut it off. So I'm going to take this to my paper cutter, which unfortunately I can't show you because it's in the other room and it's too heavy to move. So I'm going to go cut this bind off and cut up my cover and I will come back and show you my next steps. All right? I hope you find this like super easy because it's not scary at all. Oh my gosh, guys, here's the aftermath. Look what I did. It's so scary. I'm one of those people who love paper and books so much that I just don't want to mess it up. And it's scary to tear something apart that's so valuable to me. So here's my spine. Cut all the way off, including my bookmark. And then a couple of extra things. So there's the aftermath. Here's what I have. A really cool cover. I'm really getting excited. I'm glad I did this. I don't know whose idea this was. I've seen several people do it, so I'm sorry I can't give anybody credit, but there's a lot of people who've been doing this, and I am so happy they did, because now I get to do mine too. And look at that. Now again, I have this jumbo, gigantuan paper cutter, and I was able to do this all in one cut. I did do the cover separate, but once you have this spine off, or, you know, once you've separated the covers, you could easily just go through with an X-Acto knife and just peel these apart. You could tear the pages out and then cut them with a paper, a smaller paper cutter to you know make them all uniform you can do this however you want I just wanted to do it nice and clean with my giant paper cutter because I do have it I use it for lots of other things so it's a staple I have in my house and I love it so that's why I did it this way so now what I'm gonna do is I wanna put the discs on so I have this old happy planner from last year and I'm just gonna steal the discs right off of here for now but then I think I'm gonna doll it up I think I'll get some new discs but in the meantime, let's just get it bound so we've got it ready to go. 
And let me zoom out here so you can get a better view. This is a classic size happy planner. You still can't get it all in frame, huh? Hold on. Don't get dizzy. Okay, so this is a um, classic size happy planner. There are three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine discs. And my book, it looks like my journal is going to take one less. So I think I'll use eight discs on it and try and line that up like that. So we'll get rid of this bottom one and just use eight. And I'm going to start with the inside pages because they're going to align differently than the cover. <clears throat> Excuse me. As you can see, I'm trying to not tear up my pages here. My covers are quite a bit taller than the inside pages, which is awesome. So that part stayed the same. They are just about flush here on this side. So I'm going to center the pages first when I punch the holes and I will do the covers separate. Oops, I've got some remnants here falling off. So I'm going to start with the pages and I've got a giant arc I think it's called an arc paper cutter or paper hole puncher. I'm going to pull that out and I'm going to get started. So let's see what we can do. Okay, so here is my paper punch and it is an arc by Staples. I don't know if you can see that. I'll put a link for it. I got it off Amazon. It says by Staples, but it's ARC. Um, this is a heavy duty paper punch that I use for my happy planners. Um, I also have. You can also use one of these. This is for the classic size, and you can use its max three sheets. I also have the large. I use the large Happy Planner for my journaling. Um, again, max three sheets. So you can use either one of these if you'd like, but I invested again in the larger arc because I have multiple planners. I use some for work. I use some for social media. I use some for journaling and I use some for planning. So if you have any questions on how I do all that, I've got videos on how I manage my planners, um, but they are truly functional. So I'm going to use this. I think you can do like 10 to 12 pages at a time and it just makes more sense for something like this. So what I'm doing, I'm going to pull a page out of the back of the book. Not the very last page, but I just separated this. And here's a random page. I've already punched it once, just testing. And I wanted to line this up to see where my holes are gonna punch. And it's already set at letter. I don't know if you can see these. It's set here at letter size, and you, this is adjustable right here. And that's what I use for the Happy Planners. And actually, this fits perfectly. If you can see where these holes are going to punch, it's right in the middle, giving me even space on both sides. So even spacing there and there, and I'm totally happy with that. So that was my test page. Again, I pulled it out kind of with a middle back, so if it went completely haywire, I wouldn't have to see it. It wouldn't be visible. So now I'm going to go through and just start punching. Um, like I said, probably about 10 pages at a time. And I'm going to start from the back. So let's do it this way. Okay, ready? Here we go. I'm just taking, I don't know how many sheets that is. Oops, that's too many, is what it's telling me. This is pretty thick paper, too. So I'm only doing four sheets at a time. 
a time, I could probably do some more. done there now what I need to do is my covers and I want these to be a little different but I don't want to line it up there because then I'm gonna have too much space at the top right so I'm gonna have to break it up and go right in between there I think yeah that's perfect it goes right in between the punches on either side. And just to make sure, I can use this as a guide. I think that's perfect. Ta da! Went right through. Perfect. Here's the back. Let's do the front. You're familiar with these again this is a classic size happy planner I am going to remove last year's calendar to reuse these discs on my new Bible journal so if you've never done this before it's super super easy let's start with the covers and you just lift straight up covers are harder these are super laminated but just make sure you're lifting straight up. Don't use any kind of a weird angle or you'll start ripping or tearing or all that. Just pops right off. Just let it naturally kind of pop off and just pull straight up. Okay, same with the pages. I just grab a, you know, a month's worth and just pull starting at the top and just lift upwards. Okay, 
Super easy. Just be gentle. You can see I switched planners mid-year and so most of this back part has not even been used. So these are pages I will probably recycle and Franken plan into something else. together we've got a nice solid foundation and I'm gonna again go from the back I think just to make it easier and don't forget we've got one extra disc because this is one smaller than the classic size happy planner so there are eight discs here and just take a section and start pushing them in and it will get easier as you go because your discs will start staying in more of a formation But if you're familiar with Happy Planners, you've done this probably a hundred times. And Happy Planners aren't the only ones that use these discs. There are um, the Arc Planners, like the Paper Punch that I have. Those are a disc binding uh, planner system through Staples and Amazon. And so it doesn't have to be just Happy Planner. And if you're interested in doing like a spiral bind, um, you can use, I have the Zing, what's it called, Zing, Z something machine um, for spiral binding. A lot of people use the We Are Memory Keepers version. I think there's a Heidi Swap cinch, if you've heard of that. So there's different ways that you can um, homemade, you know, at home, do it yourself, bind. And if you don't want to do all of this, you can take it to Staples or Kinko's or one of those places, have them cut and bind it. But these, there's so many options for doing this stuff at home that that's the way I do it. And I just wanted to share that with you. Okay, now do you see we're getting some stability there? Now I'm just able to pop them in because my discs are staying a little bit more in formation and we've got a stronger foundation for everything. So now the pages are just kind of popping in. It gets really easy.
Ta-da! Oh my God, you guys, how stinking cute is this? I adore this little Bible journal. That is it. That's how easy it was. I love it. Oh my gosh, I can flip to any page I want. I can stamp on it. I can pull the pages out, work on them, write, journal, stamp, draw. Oh my goodness. I am in love with this book. Okay, so once again, I will put a link below on where I bought my book. This is adorable. And if you want to know how to bind it, we just learned. It was so easy. All right, guys, thanks for being here with me. If you enjoyed this video, please, please give me a thumbs up. Share it with your friends. Um, subscribe to my channel. I do a lot of different crafty DIYs. I make a lot of cards, and I do weekly plan with me's on every Friday. So um, check it out. Subscribe, ring the bell for notifications, and leave me comments, questions, and any ideas you have. I would love to be a part of your world if you would like to be a part of mine. Thank you so much. I will see you in the next video. Please remember to always be thankful, be kind, and keep living light. See you guys.